Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're gathered on Treaty 6 territory, and I acknowledge the Métis people who share a deep connection to this land. I'm Laurie Sigurdsson, Alberta NDP MLA for Edmonton Riverview and critic for seniors' issues, continuing care, and home care. I'm joined today by Alberta NDP leader Rachel Notley. Continuing care facilities serve some of the most vulnerable members of our communities. Many of us have grandparents, parents, extended family, or friends who are in continuing care. On Thursday, the UCP government's continuing care announcement left many unanswered questions, including how they will ensure affordable public spaces are available, and if there is even a real plan for recruiting and retaining the healthcare workers who provide care in our continuing care facilities. We know that the pressures of Alberta's continuing care system are immense today, but the government will fail, fall short of their own acknowledged need of 10,000 new spaces in the next five to six years when the demand for those services are expected to grow by 62%. And although Albertans' continuing care facilities have a dire shortage of caregivers, the government's latest Alberta is Calling recruitment drive has left health care workers out of the program. We know the UCP government is focused on privatization and is willing to sacrifice the well-being of vulnerable Albertans for the sake of their bottom line. And the COVID pandemic clearly and tragically showed us that people fare far better in public care facilities than private for-profit facilities. The UCP government's track record for seniors' care is undeniably abysmal. They cannot be trusted with caring for the most vulnerable in our society, and unfortunately, that is clearly illustrated in their new Continuing Care Act, which comes into effect on April 1st. I would like to invite Rachel to take it away here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Lori. Um, I'll get to the Continuing Care Act in just a moment, but first, let me remind everyone that during the UCP leadership race, Danielle Smith actually mused that perhaps the answer to the challenges in continuing care would be to put sick people into motels. Well, as we all read this weekend, that horror appears to have come to pass. A 62-year-old Edmonton man, paralyzed on the left side after a stroke, thought he was being transferred from the Royal Alec Hospital here in Edmonton to some type of assisted living facility. But instead, he was taken by a taxi that finished its journey in front of the travel lodge in Leduc. An employee at the travel lodge told CBC News that the travel lodge was a motel, not a long-term care facility, and that an organization which had lost their accreditation had rented out between eight to 10 rooms for several days. The employees said someone would come during the day to check on the guests, some of whom were in wheelchairs. Uh, that was what it looked like. So the question is, is that the future of continuing care under a UCP government? Motel medicine? Possibly. Because we are here today to talk about clear new evidence that this government plans to reduce the quality of care received by seniors and to reduce their accountability for that care. In 2022, the UCP passed the Continuing Care Act, repealing the Nursing Homes Act. And with it, they planned to replace the regulation under that act, called the Nursing Homes Operations Regulation. And they planned to replace it with a new one called the Continuing Care Act Regulations. Now, regulations are the parts of laws that we don't actually get to see and debate in the legislature. Instead, they are decided by cabinet. And in this case, just a few days ago, on February 28th, the UCP government passed an order in council to bring in new regulations which come into force on April 1st. These regulations will replace the basic rules that existed under the prior Nursing Homes Act, but they have one very large gaping hole. Albertans will be shocked to learn that in these new rules, the minimum number of hours of care that seniors are supposed to receive in care facilities has been eliminated. Now, previously, in the nursing, homes, uh, nursing Home Operations Regulation authorized under the Nursing Home Act, specifically under Section 14, nursing services and personal services staff under subsection 5 said that an operator shall 
cause nursing and personal services staff to provide at least 1.9 paid hours of combined nursing and personal services per resident per day in the nursing home. Now, as an aside, we know that that 1.9 hours a day of guaranteed care is too low. The Auditor General concluded that over a decade ago. But we do know it is the only number that is guaranteed in law, or at least it was, until February 28, 2024. Now, as of April 1st, there will be no minimum number guaranteed in law. Now, the UCP will claim they fund just over three hours of care, but the province of Ontario just increased that to four hours. But either way, here in Alberta, there will no longer be anything in law that guarantees any of that funding is actually provided. And it will be up to individual discretionary agreements negotiated with private sector operators. Until now, if an Albertan wanted to be assured that their loved one would get a minimum standard of care, it was in the law. Now, there is no guarantee. Let me be clear. This may be coming out on April 1st, but Albertans will not be fooled. Our grandparents, our parents, our extended family and friends deserve to live in dignity and to receive the high quality care that we all expect, not to be hidden away somewhere in a motel along a highway. It is not too late to do what is right for all Albertans. So we are calling on the UCP government to amend the Continuing Care Act regulation and to include basic minimum standards of care that Albertans will be able to count on because it lives in the law. In addition, we believe that all standards should be regularly published and Albertans shouldn't have to make requests to get them. As well, these minimum standards should be increased to at least the minimum standards that we now see in Ontario. And finally, and perhaps obviously, a senior should never be sent to a motel to receive their care from someone who randomly pops by. That kind of motel medicine should never be acceptable to Albertans, and the protection from that should be written out in law. Albertans in continuing, continuing care deserve better from this UCB government. Now, before I conclude, I just want to turn to a matter that occurred today in estimates. Lori Sigurdsson, our critic for seniors, specifically asked the minister questions about the motel medicine crisis that we have learned about in the past few days. First of all, the minister directly contradicted the experience that was described by the victim of this mismanagement, Mr. Caniff. She implied that he had chosen to go to the travel lodge when in fact he'd had no idea where he was going until he got there. Secondly, Lori asked specifically just how many more discharged patients from acute care are inappropriately housed at that specific travel lodge. And the minister, again, refused to answer. In addition, Lori asked how many more contracts there are with this agency, Contentment Social Services, throughout the province. And Minister LaGrange also refused to answer that question. And finally, the minister was asked how many more motels are serving as the site for this profoundly inadequate care to people in need of care across the province. And once again, the minister clammed right up, just didn't answer the question. So, we call on her today to come clean on all the answers to all the questions, and as well, again, we call on her to apologize to Mr. Caniff and any other Albertans who have been forced into these situations where they have inappropriate and improper care. So thank you, and we're happy to take any questions folks might have. All right, thank you, Rachel. We'll just go to questions now. Just a reminder for those joining us on the phones to use star nine, and for those joining us on Zoom to use the raise hand function to get into the question queue. Our first question comes from Lisa Johnson at the Edmonton Journal. Go ahead, Lisa, your line is open. Sure, if the minister um, mentioned that three hours, that they're providing care at three hours per day in the, in the estimates this morning, if she did, I missed it, but um, I am being told by the government that uh, continuing care homes in Alberta are funded to provide an average of 3.62 worked care hours per resident 
per day. Um, and they also say that the updated regulations improve flexibility and allow for operators to develop staffing plans to meet the unique needs of their residents. Um, how would you respond to, to that explanation? So uh, what I would, how I would respond to that is that um, they will get 3.62 hours on average until they don't. And we won't know because it's not in law. And this UCP government has not earned our trust on this matter in general and also in terms of the way they've been handling uh, and providing misinformation around what happened with the transfer of, uh, of uh, Mr. Canna to the travel lodge. So um, the reality is, is that the funding arrangement will be negotiated in discretionary agreements between private sector operators and the government. And just because in the past they tried to fund to a certain level does not mean that A, they will do it in the future, or B, that they will give themselves any authority to enforce that. So taking it out of regulation, the flexibility and the red tape that, th that they're trying to eliminate, eliminate is actually the fundamental basic protection that Alberta families are looking for for their loved ones. So I would say that this government should care more about those families and less about the flexibility needs of private sector operators. Do you have a follow-up, Lisa? Thanks for that. Yeah, and I'm not sure Lori wants to take this one, but when it comes to um, the staffing issue, because uh, government has also said, and, and operators, government has said that they heard from providers, operators, they needed flexibility, and operators have said they, it really depends on the workforce and, and, and developing the workforce and having that staff um, in order to, in order to provide that care. So what, what needs to be done on the staffing front? I mean, you kind of touched a little bit on the, the fact that, that the, Healthcare workers have been cut out of that um, particular attraction bonus. But what, what needs to be done on the attracting staff side to, to continue in care? Well, absolutely. There's so many issues in terms of staffing. Uh, and we know that uh, there's a you know high rate of absenteeism and vacancies and a lot to do with just uh, uh, the pay, you know, it's a low paid work. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, the UCP has not done is uh, sort of created a ladder process for healthcare aides to be able to advance into uh, the next higher position like uh, licensed practical nurses. They've done that for licensed practical nurses, but of course that's really hurt the continuing care system because they then go into the acute care system. And so then the uh, continuing care system doesn't have those licensed practical nurses. So actually, you know, helping the, helping the acute care system has actually hurt the continuing care system. And, uh, you know, uh, supporting them also to have full-time jobs with full benefits. This is also a huge issue in this uh, area. And of course, we saw the you know, the tragic uh, issues during COVID-19 when people had to cobble together a job and they were at several facilities and that spread the virus very sadly and created uh, people uh, with more cases and more deaths. So, so supporting the workers in many ways, those are a few of the things that I would suggest. Did you want to say anything yeah. else? Yeah, the only thing that I would add to it is, you know, having spent some time in BC as well as watching how they manage COVID, is that uh, the more uh, continuing care that is provided publicly, the more capacity the government has to develop a, a broad-based uh, human resources strategy that is properly funded and attracts people into it. And so, you, for instance, you saw in BC during COVID that they actually were able as a result to bar people from going from place to place to place and to rather fund them to stay in one place. Alberta's system is incredibly fragmented and fractured. It is, is, it is, it is infused with all these private sector operators trying to make their dough. And the bottom line is that uh, uh, workers' um, uh, career path, their security is considerably less. And so obviously in a situation we're in now, it becomes very hard to recruit people. But the answer is not to make uh, Albertans in need of care pay for the mismanagement that the UCP has created on this front. The answer is to properly fund it, set out the standards in legislation, hold themselves accountable, and stop trying to privatize our health care. Anything further, Lisa? Uh, 
Uh, no, thank you for that. And we'll do one last password question on the line. And with no further questions, we'll wrap today. Thanks, folks. Thank you.